In this video, we're gonna go over the Massachusetts real estate market data for what happened in the month of January, 2023 for single family homes, condos, as well as multifamily properties. Now, the first month has given us some interesting developments, three markets that are acting in very different ways with one even being down. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker that sold more than a thousand houses and I'm one of the state's top real estate agents. If you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then you might wanna consider hitting that subscribe button. Let's start with single families. In January of 2023, we saw 2,091 single family homes sell for an average sales price of $668,000. Compared to January of 2022, this represents a year over year decrease in the number of sales by an astounding 32.6%. Now nearly 33% less in the number of sales, which sales activity like that, prices had to be down, right? Compared to January of 2022, home prices were actually up by 1.7% year over year. Now sales were down, but prices were up. I feel like that was the story of the last half of 2022. The sales levels of January of 2023 were on level with 2011 as well as 2012, which has all been the story again of the last half of 2022. In that sense, the sales levels and the leveling off of pricing increases are carrying over from the end of 2022 to the beginning of 2023. But with the decrease in sales activity, we must have a huge surge in inventory, right? Not quite. Inventory increased, and it's about a thousand more units than in January of 2022. And that might sound like a lot, but this inventory is still the fourth lowest level of inventory since we started keeping good records, and nearly six times less than the inventory levels back in 2012. Home pricing levels increased by 0.87% in 2012. So the 1.71% pricing increase is really in line with what we saw back in 2012. In 2012, we sold 42,723 units. So what does all of this mean? January was in line with our uh, new normal, which is sustainable, by the way. For the market bears, it's one more month of prices not falling. It's one more month of inventory not surging. To be the broken record, you can't have a price correction without a surge of inventory. This is what has made our market so different compared to the many other markets in the country, specifically in the South. My prediction for 2023 was that we were not going to necessarily see home prices go up or go down and that they were gonna lay flat. Only one month down and the data looks to be supporting this prediction. Keep in mind that sales happening in January are properties that went under agreement back in the end of November and in December. So we've seen a, dare I say it, surge in our pendings in the last couple of weeks, which is sales activity that we're gonna see close in February. This market, it's fragile. With such low inventory levels, the market can't handle a huge uptick in sales. My worry right now is that if interest rates go down and that stimulates the market, then the balance that we have right now could very quickly be pushed off kill and we could see a crazy seller's market all over again. So onto the condo market. But first, if you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then please consider subscribing. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. In the condo market, in January of 2022, we saw 2,054 units close in Massachusetts for an average sales price of $673,000. Now, while the single family market had an even month, the condo market had a very strong month. Sales were down by 24.8% year over year, but prices, they were up by 8.8%. And while I hate this stat, it seems like many people are obsessed with it. So prices were actually up 13.4% month over month. This was a pretty big shock being that the condo market, well, it's been one of the softer markets recently. From a sales perspective, this marks 14 months of consecutive year over year sales declines. This is to be expected, and I'm actually gonna expect to see it for another five or six months or so. The year over year pricing increase was a big surprise. In December, we recorded home prices down 2% year over year. But in the last five months, we've actually seen year over year home prices go down twice, but then two of those five months had an 8% or more year over year price appreciation. It's like a roller coaster. Are you sick yet? We had 1,019 units closed in January of 2023. In 2019, we sold 1,086 units in January, but I really felt it was a better comparison to January of 2014 when we sold 1,052 units. Not 2008 or 2009, sales levels of 2014. In other words, more data telling us that there is no crash and that a lot would need to change in order for there to be one. So sales, well, they were down. Prices were up. Let's take a look at those inventory and what it did. Inventory levels are below the 2020 levels and above the 2022 level. So the second lowest level in recent history. Now inventory in January of 2023 was up by 24.2% compared to inventory levels of 2022. That sounds like a lot, fair enough. But the January 2023 level 
are 32.7% below the inventory levels of 2021. Today, inventory levels are 4.6 times below the levels in 2010 when there were 7,804 condos on the market. So sales are down to 2015 levels in January, which is the equivalent to what they were at the end of 2022. Quick recap, we sold 20,085 units in 2022 compared to the 19,855 units in 2015. So really no change from that status quo. Prices are up for the month and inventory is still extremely tight. Now the first quarter, it's always hard Hard when it comes to these market reviews because there isn't that much data. It's just a very small data set at this point. But from this data, what we can see is that the market has not gone down. And if anything, it's actually showing signs of going up. Still way too early to tell and not nearly enough data for me to move off my prediction that home prices really won't move up or down, but it's interesting nonetheless. Now onto the multifamily market. In January of 2023, there were 353 properties that sold for an average sales price of $640,000. We were seeing signs of the multifamily market weakening towards the end of 2022, and it's looking like it's continuing. And by the way, that kind of makes sense. Increasing interest rates affects the affordability for all buyers, but it really affects investors that need a certain return. Let's say it this way. Say you could buy an investment property last year and finance it and maybe make a small monthly profit or break even. Most investors will not be willing to buy that same exact property at the higher interest rate if it means that they're going to lose money on that monthly carry. When we look at January sales and compare them year over year, we can see the effects of these interest rate hikes on this market. Sales are down 39.7% as there were 585 multis that sold in January of 2022. Meanwhile, prices were down 1.2% year over year when the average sale price in January of 2022 was $648,000. While the cost of ownership is going up with the increased interest rates, rental rates in many markets are actually declining. The crazy thing is that we haven't seen inventory levels increase for multifamily properties either. As of the end of January, we had 619 multifamily properties on the market. It's up slightly from 563 in January of last year, but far below the 822 units that we had on the market in January of 2021. Sellers simply, they're just not coming to market, which might make a lot of sense. I'm theorizing here, but if you're an investment property owner and are locked in at that low interest rate while having enjoyed a couple of years of really strong rental growth, then that investment property is probably providing a pretty strong ROI. I think about a two family that I bought in 2008. The ROI is crazy high. I'd never sell this thing. It's a huge cash cow. The only way that this comes to the market is when I pass away and my kids are selling it. My theory is that I wonder if many of the other people, other owners out there of investment properties would be just the natural sellers are in the same boat that I am. It also makes very little sense to upgrade doing a 1031 exchange unless the deal on the buyer side is phenomenal and makes up for the higher borrowing costs. The multifamily market is, in my opinion, the weakest of all the markets. If there's going to be a pricing decline in Massachusetts, then I see it being in this market more than any of the other. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? All of my information is in the description below. I always love chatting about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and find out just all about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about any or all of this market data, then drop me a line in that comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time and answer you. An informed person, they're a powerful person. So until next time.